like to call the Thursday, January 6th school board meeting to order. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Congratulations on being re-elected, Dr. Massey and the rest of the school board. Um, tonight, we have with us is our continued effort to get more and more students in front of the board. Our students against, I'm gonna get this wrong because they changed it. Constructive positions, I want to get that right. Um, and the reason why I always get that wrong, I was telling you guys before we got in that one of my best friends from high school's parents actually helped start this organization way back. Way back when, um, and they switched it from driving drunk, I believe it was, to destructive decisions, which is way more encompassing. Um, and I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Schwartz and Officer Holstead. They do a lot of neat things throughout the year. Their biggest thing is the mock car crash. And with us tonight, we also have several students that are leadership in SAD, but also participated in that event. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Mr. Schwartz and Officer Holstead. Hi, Mr. Schwartz. How's it going? See some familiar faces uh, here. Uh, I get the uh, same pleasure to introduce the SAD uh, and the Mark Tar Crash. Mark Tar Crash is the end of our squad. This is Jack Ellenbelt, Will Voss, Allison Johnson, and Zoe Brock. And uh, they're going to give you guys information about what SAD does and then also uh, our experiences with the Mark Tar Crash uh, this year. Thank you. So I'll just give a quick brief overview of the Mark Tar Crash. It has been around Forest Lake High School since I went to high school there and graduated in 2001, so um, for a long time. And um, the high school SRO works with the SAD advisor every other year, um, and we create a committee of kids, um, teachers, and then local community organizers that help with the CR. So I'm gonna let the kids get up and kind of do a little bit more explaining. <laughs> Hi, so as they introduce us, my name is Zoe Brothin. And I'm Jack Allenfeld. Um, so we have a little slideshow here for you today. We heard you like visuals, so <laughs> take some fun pictures to look at. Um, and there you'll find a link to the video of the mock car crash as well. Obviously, you don't need to watch that tonight for your own personal time if you'd like to do that. Super cool, super fun. Um, so first, we have some pictures. Thanks, Austin. Wow, clear. <laughs> so first, we just have a couple pictures from the actual car crash that we did at the school. Um, so me and Jack were both involved in the car crash ourselves. Um, we both played um, two of the biggest roles. He played the victim, <laughs> and I played uh, the, I guess, the person who went to jail. Super fun, by the way. Handcuffs are not comfortable. Um, so the mom car crash to us was very, very real. Um, filming <laughs> was definitely interesting, and we couldn't stop laughing, but. Throughout that, it was a very real situation, especially when we were at the school in front of our peers. Um, it was very emotional tolling. Um, we all gained relationships with each other that we thought we would never have. I don't think I'd ever think I'd be standing up here with Jack, like talking to you guys today. Yeah. So definitely something that I'll probably never forget. Um, this is us at the hotel. The hotel was probably one of the most emotional tolling things that we had to go through. We were isolated from our friends and family had no communication with anyone, no technology. It's very stressful. <laughs> Can't be away from Snapchat for that long. <laughs> um, so the impact it had on the community and our peers was probably the biggest thing and the most influential thing and the reason why I actually wanted to do this. Um, I think if we changed one kid's mind in our school that we did our jobs doing that, and mm -hmm. Megan and Caldwell and Stang, who's not with us anymore, and Schwartz were also big helps within that. Um, and I know that they feel good about making peers make better decisions. Uh, so we as a community can recognize the dangers and outcomes of both underage drinking and drinking and driving. They can help put an end to it. And I know that students would rather hear from their peers than adults who lecture them and yell at them. So I think that us doing this and us taking the time out of our lives and uh, the staff members who took time out of their lives to help us like definitely made an impact on this in our school. So then I will lead you up to Allison who's gonna talk about staff. Here's just some pictures. Um, I'm gonna pull this out. I didn't think I'd ever be standing in front of a school board giving a speech, but I'm glad I am. Uh, so yes, I was already introduced, but my name is Allison Johnson. I'm a senior here at the Forest at the high school. Um, I am the SAD president, so if, like if you already said, but if you didn't know, um, SAD just stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions. Um, our club has been highly focused on pushing the idea that every decision does have a consequence and kids need to understand that. Um, within SAD, we have been focusing on working on mental health and then decision making. 
Um, one, one of our most recent activities that we did was a mental health week. We did that at the end of the quarter. Um, where we actually hosted like different activities throughout the week. So a few of the things we did, um, we actually wheeled a TV into the lunchroom every single day and we played like Wii games. I don't know, if, I'm sure you, many of you, or if not all, have kids. I'm sure you've heard of the Wii. We did like Just Dance every day at lunch. Everyone, like everyone possible that wanted to came up and stood in the line to play Just Dance. Um, very fun, just to get people's minds off the end of the quarter and having to worry about all these other things. Um, along with we, we did like coloring pages, so kids that maybe didn't want to come up and dance in front of the whole school could sit down and color um, a duck. We did a lot of different things, but a duck was like the most popular for whatever reason. Um, and then the last thing we did was on Friday, we actually catered in Cold Stone and then offered everyone to come up and pick up pay. It was like three bucks for a thing of ice cream um, and sit down and enjoy that with friends. Um, another thing, uh, one of our next activities that we do plan to do is a prom campaign. So one of the things is you're going to promise to be safe over prom weekend since we know that's kind of a big time um, where a lot of people sometimes don't make the best choices. This is where we're going to kind of do something during prom week where we're just kind of pushing um, to recognize that every consequence can be uh, have an effect negatively. So I just want to make sure that we're really pushing the idea to be safe. Um, SAD has built many connections through the school and has been known very well um, and have a very, what's the word? We've had a lot more kids become interested this year, which has been very fun to see. Um, I think we had a larger turnout than I would have thought, and it's just been fun to see the group grow. Um, Jack and myself have been in SAD since freshman year, and I didn't think I was ever going to be the president, and I'm just glad that I can now be here representing SAD today. Um, Will is one of our sophomores that joined this year. I know he wasn't introduced very well, but Will, you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, for sad, I, sadly, we don't have any pictures of our club. That was a picture of my friend Ellen and I eating ice cream that we finally got like a 30 second break in between lunches to actually enjoy ice cream for ourselves because the lines were down. I'm sure you've all been in the high school, but we're like stuck in this little like nook right by the auditorium and the line was like basically the size of the lunchroom and that that was not fun deal but we did it and now we're here and we're going to do it again at the end of this quarter so very excited couple's laughing at me because all i do is talk i'm going to sit down thank you guys <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, thank you i know they said you like questions so if you have any questions go ahead <laughs> <laughs> you guys can stand up because okay. they're not going to have questions um but this is just a, a a small sampling of this group and as most of our groups I don't think they understand the real impact they have on our community um, and with the growth of their group and you'll see with the other groups that are coming up later on they're exploding and it is a testimony to where our youth are and what they need and we need to keep them in school we need to get them involved in groups like this um, kids are screaming for it and groups like this that provide, provide those opportunities for the school year are huge so with that, they do have already some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So was it a personal, like, far as decision to change the name, or is that a national decision? I believe national. Okay. Yeah. It, it makes sense, but if it was you guys, it's brilliant, because it really is more encompassing. I wish I could say we did that, but unfortunately, we're <laughs> <laughs> well, giving you credit. So. <laughs> but I was, no, I didn't. Yeah, she did I was in SAD when I was in high school, and it was it was a really good group, and it, gave, it gives you leadership, it gives you a sense of belonging, it gives you something on your resume, but I still remember plenty of things that we did in high school, and I'm really glad to see that it keeps going. Um, I wish the destructive decision stopped, but it's still, still a good cause to keep working it towards. Thank you. I'm curious how many members do we have? That's my question. Yeah, so currently I think we're standing right around 20 members. We were trying to like pick shirt sizes. I guess that's how we figured out. <laughs> but yeah, it's growing every day. I know 20 doesn't sound like a huge number, but compared to when I, my freshman year, I think there was like 10. So honestly, a double or an increase by half, that's still really huge to us. And we're seeing more interest every day. So. How often do you meet? Um, we meet, we try to do every Friday, every Friday morning at like 7.15. Always have donuts, right? So shorts. Um, but yeah, so. Right. Yeah. I guess we don't. <laughs> but yes, we do try to meet every Friday. Sometimes there's days where we decide we, maybe we want to sleep in for our mental health. But yes, <laughs> um, there are most times every Friday. And then your ice cream event, do you plan so many X amount events on school year or do you? 
Um, there is like, I know we had kind of a rough, like we're gonna do the, at the beginning of the yeah, year, kind of we sit down and we're like, we wanna focus on this. Um, I know recently, I it's a new thing with a grant got for ATOD. I don't know if you guys have heard much about it. Um, I'm also the, what the, I think I'm like a student, yeah, student rep for ATOD, so I'll be like headed, not heading that, but me and my co-president, Ashlyn Vetch, we're actually gonna be helping along. We're kind of like the student voice right now for that. Um, so that was another thing, we're kind of like partnering with them a little bit, um, and they're also going to be starting a student group sometime soon, I'm pretty sure, um, that will also be coming into the high school, and I believe we'll be partnering with them. Um, but for events, we just try to meet as often as we can, and then okay, this sounds like a good time to do this because it's going to benefit this. Um, so yeah, I guess not necessarily do we have a set number, but we try to get a lot, as many as we think will help. That's great. I'm curious, what was your motivation for joining SAD? Um, so I, um, I'm actually new to Forest Lake this year. This is my first year here. Oh, well, well, and um, Jack's one of my good friends, and he was going to join SAD, and it's been great ever since. Oh, great job, Jack. Well, welcome. Glad <laughs> to hear it. Thank you. Great report. So I was just going to ask about fundraising. How, how do you guys, I mean, I know you, I think it's subsidized partly by fundraisers, or how, what do you do for events for that? Yeah, so budget, I know we did get some type of grant from, a yeah, a while ago we got a grant, and we honestly used that for materials to do things like the coloring. We bought tons of like crayons and colored pencils, and then we actually did end up making, I, I don't want to give you as like a rough estimate, it was around $300 from that ice cream event. We profited 50 cents off every cup, um, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but 300 bucks for a group that honestly doesn't spend that much money is pretty good. So yeah, we're gonna and then plan to do that again at the end of this quarter. So it's great that you put oh, yeah, and yeah. concession stands, okay. yes. And and also that you planned it around time that's really stressful for students. Yeah, I mean that's really important. Right. That's great work and great great plan. Thank you. Not a question, a comment again. I guess I'm just really impressed with how enthusiastic you are about this. I mean, I really do appreciate that. So, nice job. Thank you. Keep it up. Any other questions, comments? I kind of like these. Keep them up. Yeah, I think that's all right. I don't know if that's the same or how like. Well, we love when student groups come in. It's just really refreshing and it's good to hear what's going on at the high school. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Report, we have uh, Linwood Elementary with Principal Matson. place like Linwood and I think um, I've told you before and I will tell everybody that ever asks I landed at the best school and my hope when I became a principal was to land in a building where I fit and Dr. Massey can tell you Linwood is just an excellent fit for me so every time I get ready to plan this presentation I get so excited about how can I make Linwood shine because we're so special, even though we're very far away. We have so much to offer, and I have amazing people here that are gonna help you understand ways in which we shine at Linwood. So thank you for letting us present. So we're just gonna discuss three topics today. The first topic is just the catalyst approach, and we'll talk about that in a sec. I want to just update all of you on our social emotional learning at Linwood. In the district, we started the second step curriculum implementation. So we'll just share a little bit about how that's going and then how that affects our counseling and what social emotional learning we're doing for our staff. And then the third one, of course, is just sharing some forest updates with you as well. I just want to start with the first topic, which is the catalyst approach, which may be something new to you. 
which I'm really excited to be able to help you learn more about. Um, when I started teaching in Minneapolis many years ago, I was exposed to this approach and it changed my teaching. And a few years ago, I had the opportunity to go back into the classroom and I was able to kind of see that as a teacher, I'm very verbal. I love to talk, right? <laughs> I can be very long-winded. And the catalyst approach really helped me to get rid of my verbal clutter. Kind of just get to what you gotta say, keep it simple, make sure that you're taking every minute that you have with your students to be about learning and growth. So the other thing that I have really learned through Catalyst is just how relationship building it is. As teachers, we have lots of students in our room and how we interact with them when they're having a moment really can fracture relationships. So Catalyst was another way that when there are things going on in the room with a student, that I can do that in a very private and nonverbal way. So really, Catalyst saved me when I was a teacher and it preserved relationships and it helped me to be a more effective teacher and provide more time for instruction. So it was the best PD I had ever gotten in my career. And so when I got this job, I knew I wanted to bring Catalyst to Linwood. So I'm really honored to have um, Jackie Brickman and she can tell you a little bit about herself and her role with Catalyst. But her and I work together in Minneapolis Public Schools and she is um, a partner now in the Catalyst approach. And I also brought Abby. She was my um, coach and PD when I was in an open pen. And so I'm really excited to have them share a little bit more with you about what the Catalyst approach is all about. Dr. Massey and School Board, thanks for having us. Um, as Gretchen said, my name is Jackie Burton. I'm on the left there. And Nancy Burns, so on the right. We each own our own companies, and we founded an approach called the Catalyst Approach. And our goal is to, well, in addition to our mission and vision, what we do is we look in classrooms, and together the two of us have been in about 50,000 classrooms all, all over. And what we look for is things that are causing either confusion for children or adults, frustration or inequity. And usually the things that we're seeing in terms of patterns are done not intentionally. Like things with the best of intentions that have those negative results. And what we do is when we find a pattern that over and over is causing frustration, confusion, or inequity, then we figure out what can we do to disrupt that pattern. So then we try, we feel it's like to try something. So Abby, before she came to work with me with the class, and I would experiment in, I'd say, okay, let's try this, let's see how it works. And if it made a difference, if it disrupted that pattern, then we would try it in multiple situations. Right? Does it work in, in a special ed self-contained classroom? Does it work in high school? Does it work here? And if it worked in all of those places to disrupt that negative pattern, then we would teach that strategy to other people. And so our goal is that every single child will be surrounded by people who understand, nurture, inspire, and support them through helping adults change their behavior versus focusing on how to help kids change their behavior. So Abby's going to talk more specifically about the work she's done at Linwood, and then we can answer questions. Good evening. Thank you again for having us. Um, my name is Abby Larson. I was um, a classroom teacher for many years, both at Mount Sioux and in Oak Hennepin before doing this job. I've been with the Catalyst Approach for about five years now. Um, and I had the pleasure of working at Linwood. It, honestly, even though they're all standing here, it is one of the most joyful schools I've had the chance to work in. And we work all over the state. It is exactly what they say, and the teachers and Gretchen are all a testament to that. So it's been just a joy to be in your district. What we have done, um, Linwood has been really strategic in their implementation of the Catalyst approach. So the way that we rolled it out within their school was initially the entire staff had a training. Since then, the parents have also started to receive training as well. So there's this common language between all of the staff within the building. Through the training, they not only had a chance to learn new skills, get some direct instruction, but they also had chances to practice things. They had a chance to do some role plays and really a lot of discussions amongst themselves to talk about similar situations that they find themselves. 
Then the next step was bringing in coaching. So I've been to Linwood many times as a coach. So what that looks like is teachers volunteer to sign up for a coaching session. And then I come into their classroom. I bring my own little chair and everything and sit in the back of the room. And really they just teach. They do whatever they're gonna be doing in that moment in that day. And as they are teaching, they are getting, I am writing down just little coaching sheets, labeling either things that they are already doing, giving them names for the skills they're implementing, and then giving them other ideas and refinements for things that they can do with certain situations, particular students. And they just sit down right there in the classroom. So it doesn't take any time. They put their students into independent work, sit right in the back of the class, and we just quickly have a discussion and it's over. The whole coaching session takes about 20 minutes. Um, about 10 minutes of them teaching, about 10 minutes of them sitting down with a coach, and then they go back and start implementing. Then the next step, which oftentimes, and as it did for um, Linwood, it really helps to boost the implementation more than anything, was they selected a group of teachers that were all highly implementing already, all really excited about what they were implementing in their classroom, and they came on a Cuddles Live visit. So they had a chance, there was about four of us, four or five of us, and then um, we went into various different schools. Uh, we were in Noka Hennepin School District at the time. We went into highly implementing Catalyst schools and they got to visit multiple classrooms. So we would sit in the back of a classroom, we were in little headsets, and then I whisper to them and label everything that is happening with these highly implementing teachers so they can see it in real time and see what's happening with the teachers and then the impact that it has on the students. They got to have have to debrief with each other and then go back and continue their implementation and continue to receive coaching. And the final step that some of the teachers are starting to work towards is then a final certification step where they can earn a certification in Catalyst by implementing all of the strategies in one teaching session. So it has been a, just a joy to be able to start that process with them and be able to just be on this journey of, of the Catalyst approach to that. So I'm just going to invite Janelle Koenig. She's one of our second grade teachers, and she's been able to be a part of the Catalyst training, and I just wanted her to share briefly about what she does in her classroom. So come on over, Janelle. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Gretchen said, I am Janelle Koenig, and I teach second grade at Linwood Elementary, and I have been able to be a part of this entire journey. So as Abby said, I had the training in the foundational skills that all of the staff received. Abby's been in my room, I think twice for coaching, and then a few teachers as well as myself were able to go out and do the Catalyst Live, which as Abby said, was amazing for implementation. The, you know, we felt like little sports broadcasters, but it was so <laughs> nice to be able to see or hear the commentary in real time as it was happening. You were able to take notes and then the transition back to the classroom was just that much um, so what I thought I'd do tonight for you is I pulled out just four skills that I use. Four is just a taste of <laughs> everything that was offered. Um, the two skills in blue, those are the two of the foundational skills. And then the two orange are the beyond foundational skills, which I got to receive in that Catalyst Live training. So the get set, get noticed, watch and wait, I thought I would just demonstrate so you can get a little flavor of what this looks. And normally I would say sounds like, but in this case I would say doesn't sound like because it is so nonverbal, which as a teacher, it just has boosted my energy because I'm not expending it. Talking, 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 and then you don't turn into the wah, 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 wah. So get set, get noticed, watch and wait. I use this whenever I'm going to do a whole group lesson. The get set means I've got all, everything ready to go. My smart board, my smart board is up, it's working. I have all my supplies ready to go so that I don't have to break that engagement during my lesson. The get noticed, this is my favorite. So I've taught this to my students so they know what's happening. You kind of pre-teach it. But what I do is I go to my spot, in the corner of my room. My hands are open. I smile. Mm -hmm. And I scan. And I nod. And now that I've been doing it for so long, it's pretty quick that all the kids come to me. And what's even more fun is the kids will start helping me correct each other. So I'll be waiting. And I smile. And they'll say, shh, Joey, Joey, she's in her spot. She's waiting, Joey. And I didn't say a word. 
So it's magical. Um, and that's part of the watch and wait, too. You're just simply watching, waiting. And at first, it feels like you're there forever. But in reality, you know, it's now probably 10, 15 seconds. And it's amazing. Create a to-do list. I use this whenever I am going to set the kids for working independently. I put it in the same spot on my whiteboard, and it's set up the same every single time. So it's a do, put, then. So what they do, where they put it, and the then. The then is a never-ending thing that they can do. So they are they can never come up and say, I have nothing to do. I just simply point and say. Um, and then I have created some visuals that I can just put on my magnetic to help the students just get another input piece for that. The two steps ahead, after I left the live training, we kind of talked about, okay, so in your classroom, where are you feeling frustrated? What would you like to improve? For me, it was transitions. They were getting loud, they were getting too long, I was getting frustrated. So I use both of these, the two steps ahead and safety net. For the two steps ahead, when my kiddos come into the room, I have on the board kind of their jobs for the morning. And in the morning, we're kind of greeting each other, we're eating breakfast, we're already kind of moving and up and around. And then I flash the map workbook with whatever page. They know then, they're getting out their workbooks, they're turning out the page, they have it set. We go to morning meeting, we come back to morning meeting, everything's ready to go. So we don't have to waste another five minutes of opening desk, where's my pencil, oh, my page room, we're ready to go. Um, the safety net I use for my literacy small groups. So I always send one group to the table, and then I'm trying to set the stamina with the rest of the class. So now, when I send my one group, I have a safety net, so they have something that they have to do. So instead of kind of sitting, waiting for me, they're kind of building the energy, they now have a task. So they go, they're doing that task, I'm watching the stamina get set here, supporting these kids, everyone's working, then I can go and work with mine. So, like I said, this is just a tidbit of everything that I've received, but it's just really created a more like calm and supportive classroom. Um, and like I said, my energy is just reserved and I have a lot more of it. <laughs> so, thank you. Hey, thank you so much. So is that all right if I keep moving and then we can do questions at the end? Is that all right? Your call. Okay. Is that all right? Okay. So <laughs> I will tell you I was in Janelle's classroom today teaching a lesson and I knew where her spot was. And I <laughs> went there even, which sometimes it doesn't work. If you're a guest, you have to have your own spot. And they instantly were like, she's shh, shh, shh. So it, it is a very well established routine. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, Okay, so the next piece is social emotional learning. And get ready for it. We have a Forest Lake grad in our midst. And I am the lucky principal that is able to have her be a teacher in my building, and it is a complete blessing. So I'm gonna hand this off to two amazing women at Linwood. Uh, Lauren Riedemann, a product of Forest Lake. She is a first grade teacher at Linwood. And this year, we have Melanie Lorenz. She is new. She did graduate from White Bear, but we'll forgive her for that. Um, we did get her to become a ranger, so we still won, right? So they're gonna come up and just talk a little bit about social emotional learning, how we're doing with Second Step, um, how we're doing SEL with adults. So I'm excited to welcome them up. Hey, thank you for having us. It's nice to be back. Um, as a ranger, but on the teacher side of things, um, it's been a fun transition. So, thank you. Um, we're just going to talk about what we're doing um, to promote social and emotional learning for both our students and our staff. Um, it's definitely been on the forefront of our minds this year and just trying to be much more intentional than we have been in years past. Um, and we have seen a huge improvement um, with not only student behavior, um, student social and emotional learning, but also um, our staff and our building relationships. So um, for our students, as Gretchen mentioned, this year as a district, we started implementing second steps 
In years previous, our school counselor would come in and teach a lesson to each class weekly. And now the counselor is doing something else, which Melanie will talk about in a little bit. Um, and now the classroom teacher is implementing the second step lessons. We are really pleased with the curriculum that was chosen. Um, it's easy to follow, it's easy to implement, and the students really seem to be enjoying it. So we're pleased with that, and we are excited to continue that for the next couple of years. Um, second step pairs very nicely with um, PEIS. We call it Pride at Linwood. Um, so we are still promoting that positive behavior, especially this week after being gone for a couple of weeks, reteaching those expectations with our students, getting creative with our lessons, um, and finding ways to celebrate our students um, of the month as well as our students of the week and being creative um, with the adaptations of COVID and you know not having our school-wide assemblies like we were but still finding ways to celebrate those kiddos. Um, we also started a mentorship program last year. I would say this is for both the students and the staff. Um, Dr. Maxey, I think you could touch on this as well. So we have paired our students that could use um, an extra adult relationship in their life outside of their classroom teacher and that would benefit from that one-on-one -on -one time. And we've paired them up with our staff members that are willing to volunteer a half hour of their week, either during their lunch or during their prep and um, building that, that relationship. It's really special to see. I love seeing teachers walk with their mentee, you know, going to a different room in the school or to their school or if they're a classroom on their lunch break, you know, playing board games, building that relationship. It's been something that's really special. So um, we look forward to continuing that in years to come. For our staff, it has also been on, like I said, something that we're trying to be more intentional with staff SEL. So we have our onward book study. So we have a book each month. There's a different um, category, different skills that we can do to help us be resilient educators. Um, Gretchen usually touches on that one um, staff meeting a month and we sit and we have time to read our book and kind of go over it um, and each month she says this every time like this month is really relevant but it always seems to be really relevant for what's going on in our school year um, we've also partnered with our PTA which has been great they came to us and said what can we do for you teachers um, so just finding ways that they can support us um, the other day they hosted a breakfast for us it was just great to get out of our classrooms in the morning and enjoy each other's company and conversation and um, even a small morning like that it really does make a difference um, we also have been doing a lot of team building things even with just small um, gratitude and kindness activities in our lounge to um, planning events outside of the school day and helping us build that um, those relationships outside of school as well um, like I said, with um, the classroom teachers now teaching the second steps lesson, it has freed our counselor up to do some extra work. So Melanie will be able to touch on that. Yeah, so coming into Linwood, I saw the previous counselor's um, schedule. And so they had weekly lessons that they were going into classes to teach different various um, second steps on topics. So this year, kind of knowing that the teachers were gonna take that on, um, I was really excited because then I get to, I guess, develop more of a, um, classroom specific lesson so I get to target specific SEL um, topics for each specific classroom which has been really helpful so for an example um, some classes really need a lot of conflict resolution or other ones need a lot of kindness lessons so I'm able to specify for each classroom in those so that's been great and then also I've been having more time um, working with small groups so recently I have started a fourth grade boys leadership group, which has been going very well. And then also this year to um, help promote um, SEL with students and staff, um, I did write a TEFL grant. So we were awarded um, additional dollars and I put together some calming and um, resiliency boxes for each classroom teacher and then also for our special education teachers. And um, I taught the teachers how to roll it out to the students. And so most have adapted, adapted this already, but this was just um, to help assist them with those self-regulation uh, skills in the classroom. And then also we purchased a bunch of SEL um, books. So teachers, you know, they read books to their students all the time. So this is an easy book they can just take. And it also touches base on the social emotional learning skill. Um, in addition uh, to the Temple Grant, then we were awarded some dollars for our forest. So we can go ahead and talk about our school forest. Okay, thank you. I am so excited that Mr. Caldwell's here. 
because my next part of my presentation involves him a little bit. So I don't know if you know this, but Mr. Caldwell and I have known each other for a very long time. And so when I was just a student teacher, just starting my career, I actually happened to be in the building where he was a fifth grade teacher. And then we had the opportunity to work together. But Mr. Caldwell still continues to bless my life. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how. And I had no idea he was gonna be here. So just a couple forest updates because I am so passionate about the forest and the work that we can do and how it can affect our children. So one of the things that I really wanted to do, it was one of my big goals, was to get a side-by-side. -side. We have um, some staff and students that have some mobility issues and one of our staff members has been at Linwood for more than 20 years and she no longer can go to the forest. And that's always been so sad for me because the bonding that takes place when you're with a, a group of students in the forest is like no other really. So I wanted to get a side by side and I really exhausted many, 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 many different things because people have lots of ideas. Go to Polaris, they'll give you a side by side. Uh, write a grant, do this. So um, I actually had the honor of having Ag Council out in the forest. Can you believe it? And I'm gonna tell you that all those administrators when we were walking out there, it was kind of a trudge of like, oh, we are too busy to be out here. What is going on? And then once we got out there and sat down, I'm telling you, it was really great. Like they started to see the acorns that were dropping and maybe getting a little nervous that they might get hit in the head. We had excellent discussions. We were able to just see the wonderful fall leaves. Um, but while we were out there, I shared the need again for that side by side. And I think it was about a week later, Mr. Caldwell called me and he said, so I have some news for you. And I was like, oh, well, what is it? And he's like, I'm gonna give you a side by side. So um, Jim Caldwell with the high school and with the Fort Lake Police Department they agreed that we would get a side-by-side -side that they had gifted to the high school. So I put a picture of the staff with our side-by-side -side and we named her and her name is Betty. And we even have her name on the back in glittery gold. And I just want to point out that other picture of Ellie. She's one of our kindergartners and she has cerebral palsy and she struggles with being able to get out to the forest. So she was our first student, Jim that we got to give a ride to in the side-by-side. -side. Oh my word, I'm getting a little. So anyways, thank you, Mr. Caldwell, because you made a difference again in not just my life, but the life of others. And our fourth grade teacher who hasn't been out to the forest for many years, she's now able to go out there and I get to drive her, I'm her escort. So it really has made a huge difference. Um, we now have a shed that I wrote a grant for. You can see up there, we were able to put that in in the fall. And in the shed, we store our snowshoes. You can kind of see how they're organized. And we have our cross country skis in there. So we want to have other people in our district and elsewhere to be able to use those tools. And it would be much better for them to utilize them when they do not have to be in the building when we have students there. So that's why we came up with the shed. Uh, forest backpacks was another grant that I wrote to get. So all the teachers have a forest backpack with compasses and a lot of other fun tools that they can bring out with them to, be, to go to the forest. And then I just got awarded a grant to have garments. And so what the garments will give us the opportunity to do is to allow the kids to go out there and to start to set coordinates and then to pass those coordinates on to other people to see if they can find them. So it has, it's, they're amazing devices and we were able to play with them a little bit when we did some professional development with the Minnesota DNR. So we're really excited to get those started. Another really big gift that I'm using with the forest is Dr. Massey um, invited myself, Lori Chelbrin and Julie Hull to be members of the Minnesota Principal Academy. And I don't know if you know about that program, but it is amazing. So basically it's through the U of M and we have other principals in our district that have been a part of it, including Dr. Massey, but it has a very rigorous curriculum and it runs for about 18 months. And one of the big pieces of, about Minnesota Principal Academy is 
you have to do a project. So obviously you know what my project is gonna be. It's gonna be around the forest. And it's gonna center around what research can I find that proves that our kids have a nature deficit? And what kind of data can I use to prove that? So there's lots of different things that I'll be doing and I'll be excited to share that with you next year. But we have a lot going on in the forest and it continues to grow and grow. The last thing I'll share with you is our third grade teachers have partnered with two third grade teachers at a school on the north side of Minneapolis, Lucy Laney. A colleague of mine, Scott, is a third grade teacher there. And so the students are writing letters back and forth, back and forth to each other. And our hopes um, is that this winter, the kids from Lucy Laney will come up and do some time in the forest with our third graders. And then in the spring, we will take our third graders down to Theodore Worth Park which is where those students would have their closest facility that would be a nature-like facility. So depending on how COVID goes and how buses go, we'll look forward to having those two, um, and two field trips. And if that partnership grows, that's something that we would really love to do school-wide with another school. So um, that's kind of all we have for you. And I know it's a lot, but I love to come up here and just share with you how we're doing things and how we're able to shine. I wanna thank everybody that is here. I never do this job alone. So it really isn't about me, even though I'm sure I could come up here for 20 minutes and sing and dance and do a whole show. But these people are amazing. And so I want you to have an opportunity to get to know them too. So thank you. I'll be sure to block out 20 minutes in the next meeting. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. If you ask them, they know I will take it. So. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any questions, comments? Time to lose There were so many fabulous things in that presentation. It was like three presentations, really. <laughs> so um, originally when I was kind of building questions, it was how does um, PBIS, which is district-wide and, and fairly established, work with um, your catalyst approach? And then you went into it, so it kind of answered my question. But still, do, do you find that it works well together? It's not it replacing it complements? If you think of PBIS as like some structures that you put in place and like an ultimate goal, what our work is is the actual things the teacher will do to reduce the need for tiered interventions, to reduce the need to have to have procedures to respond to things, to reduce the need to have to find incentives to motivate students to do something because the teacher's going to change their behavior to reduce distractions, reduce frustration, and reduce confusion. So they work very well together. Thank you. Nice. Well, so I have a question. Is, do, is there research out on the Catalyst program and how long has it been around? Good question. <laughs> um, how long has it been around? Is <laughs> Five, you mentioned five years. Yeah, I just worked for that for oh, five years. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, it's based on real classroom interactions, both my own and my teaching partner, Nancy. We've been, I've been teaching for a long time, so we won't say how long, but over 20 years. And, um, and then in our own schools, and then when we left teaching in schools, then we spread out and watching everywhere. So it's been an, an evolution of those observations. Um, and the research there is, um, there's some in the packet, and then on our website, there are some. There are many hundreds of action research projects that teachers have done, both in um, a lot of Minneapolis, Osseo, and other places where they have, you know, on their master's program and things like that. Um, Dr. Amy Reed um, did, she's a, she's a principal, she did her dissertation on our work looking at the difference between when people get certified, which is um, what you mentioned the, um, implementation of those foundational skills, there's two levels of certification. There's one, I can implement those skills in one section. Then there's another level that is, I can demonstrate those while there's other people in the room. Because we all know that like, we can do something great, but if like six people are like, oh, show me that, like it's harder to kind of replicate that when you have an audience. And these folks are the people that people visit when they go on a visit. And what she was interested in is, when people get certified, does that increase their efficacy? And what she found is when people get certified with standard certification, it increases their efficacy around management. And when people got certified as a demonstration teacher, it increased their efficacy around management, engagement, and the ability to manage. 
So we also have data from schools on reduction of suspensions, removals, things like that. So well, such an impressive big program and all of your I mean it's just like instantaneous uh, the information and the feedback and that just makes it so relevant. So kudos that I just never even heard of it, but that means nothing. But Gretchen, this has been just energizing. It's like I want to just go home now. <laughs> shed we're like oh we'll push Betty in there the shed is not secure enough so we have a big um, garage on site and so we put her in there it's 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 just a very I mean our shed is secure but not like a garage is secure and it's on a cement slab and so that was already present and I just asked Mr. Duane, our lead custodian, to kind of empty out some of the junk in there that I was insistent we did not need. Oh. And so then we were able to store her in there. So, oh, wow. yes, we take very good care of Betty. That is such a wonderful <laughs> addition, and thanks, yeah. Mr. Caldwell, to give that. And I'm thinking it would be wonderful to have it in a case of an emergency yes. as well as like transporting people mm -hmm. and the students that. That yes. is awesome. I am so impressed with the mentorship with the teachers in your own building. That is and just... Lauren actually came up with that program and introduced it to us last year. Oh, wow. And it just kind of was a seed of an idea and it's really grown. And some of those mentorships have continued to this year. So Dr. Massey actually mentors a student in our building, started it last year and now continues to come up weekly to meet with that student. Wow. So it's really been a powerful program. That is really incredible. I I wish we could have a board retreat out there and go snowshoeing. We can, and I would love to help and facilitate that. It's nobody's in for tomorrow morning. No. Next Wednesday. Yeah. Remember, Kettle? I have a question for Greg. Yeah. The, uh, if I understood that right, so the Minnesota Principal Academy, you mentioned that your paper is going to be on major deficit. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that just a little bit? The reason I ask you is because I spent most of my life in the woods, mm -hmm. and I love nature, and I would be interested not only in what that is, but how it connects. I mean, what what's the outcome of that once you figure it out? Yeah. Okay. So. Last year, I brought Jen Brado, who is a forest guru for us. And she gifted me with a book called Lost Child in the Woods by Richard Loof. And so over the summer, I read that book and I was like, are you kidding me? So what Richard has done is he has dug into the research around over the past 10, 15 years, how much our kids have suffered from a nature deficit because of technology and how much they aren't outside like they used to be. So think about when we all grew up. Oh my gosh, I was never inside. In fact, I can still hear my dad's whistle from blocks away telling us to come home for dinner. So his work is really around that idea of how do we get kids back into nature because then his next book talks about the N factor and the N factor has all this research about how when kids actually are out there, which they do in Finland, they have forest schools in Finland, okay? And they actually teach and live and learn out in those schools in the forest. So the N factor is all about that idea of let's look at what does it take for kids to be outside to learn? Can they still learn and how does it affect them? and it affects them a ton and even connects back to that social emotional piece. So that fresh air, that forest bathing, getting out to nature and learning about new things and being in course. So that's something I'm really gonna be digging into with my staff next year is how do we make our kids be in course? Because our kids don't inquire, they just Google it, right? Or they just have someone tell them. So how do we get them back to doing thinking thinking that makes their head hurt and that they have to work hard to figure out the answer. So I hope that helps a little bit. It does. It explains something to a 100% finish. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. I was in the woods yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I was just think, yeah, thanks for the presentation. I the Kellis approach is that that's school wide, right? The whole yes. school has it. Yes. And what I love about it is that it's empowering the kids without you having to talk and have them be directed. That is pretty impressive. Because <laughs> I mean, with everything going on in the world, as far as the energy that teachers have to have in the classroom day in and day out, it gives you a little break and a little peace. And I'm really thankful. I think it's it's the perfect time for us to embrace this program in our schools. I mean, it should probably be across the other schools too. So that's something that I'm sure maybe will be discussed in the future. But sure. And I, I think the one thing I love about it too is when I was on the north side of Minneapolis, the, anytime a kid asked something or needed help with something, we always just did it at the ready. But what Catalyst really does is it helps our kids be independent. So that we do put them, they're not constantly coming to me, their teacher, to tell them everything they're going to do in a day. Now we have tools for them to see around the room to kind of do their own learning because they can do it. And we want them to be independent learners and thinkers. So it, as a teacher using that, it was pivotal in my instruction. Well, plus we've all the distance learning that kids had to have. I mean, it also taught them they had to be a little more self-sufficient, mm -hmm. but also encouraging in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's just a great timing. And, and, also, oh, yeah. oh. and also it's nice to see Lauren yeah. in the classroom. <laughs> I love yeah. that you're a force like grad. So I'm excited well, to see you. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say with the class approach too, when Gretchen's like, this is the best key I've ever had, I'm like, Okay, this is going to be a lot, you know, we're going to have to read a lot, we're going to have to prep a lot, it's going to be, you know, what are we getting ourselves into? But Abby came for the first training and we had a meeting in the morning, a virtual meeting, and I could have used five of those strategies five minutes within the kids coming in. So that's what was really nice for teachers is that it was very easy to implement, literally like moments later after the meeting, and it was so effective. And I would say that's like one of the best things about it, is it makes such a huge difference without having a lot asking a lot from us teachers. It's pretty amazing. Feel what, whatever energy we're putting out, that's yeah. what the kids pick up on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so like, like when I'm calm and quiet, they're calm and quiet. Yeah. They're they're calm calm quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. How was the um, bringing the Catalyst approach to the room? How was that funded? And are we encouraging other schools to reach out? So this is every year we get a budget. And so some of the budget money I use towards starting to do this PD. And obviously not all of it, but one thing I found when I was at Linwood is we were really verbal there. So when we were in our, I don't, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I am verbal, but like when you're walking by a classroom and they're like, class, you, got, you guys, hey, <laughs> is everyone listening? And it reminded me of who I was as a teacher and do you know how exhausting it is to do that all day? And then I would go through phases throughout the year where I'd lose my voice because it was I was the sage on the stage. And when I found Catalyst, there was so much more about I can get their attention without even using my voice. And it's more honoring to them as well. And the piece I really liked, like I said before, is if Gail's just having a tough time, and she's just kind of a kiddo that needs that extra love and support. I have to have a good relationship with her because I have to get her to buy in to how I'm gonna help her to learn. And if I'm constantly saying, Gail, you need to, Gail, Gail, stop. We're gonna talk at recess, okay? So now I've fractured my relationship with her, but I've also shamed her in front of her peers. And Catalyst really taught me some strategies that I could have with just Gail, that no one would know that Gail and I even had. And it also preserved the community of the group. So showing the group, your instruction is really important to me. I know some of us are having a tough time, but we're gonna keep learning. And then having that private discussion with her later. So you guys, I have a lot of great things to say about Catalyst, so I'm glad we could share it with you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank you.
full of vacations and, and uh, family stuff, but I did have quite a few really good conversations with community members that reached out, um, some emails, but some personal phone calls that I appreciated and I think like moved the ball forwards. Um, I appreciate when we are able to talk. So that was great. So I, that's my thought to Patrick for them. I think, I think after our last meeting, we went to one of the concerts. We went to the choir, choir concert. It was wonderful. Well done. I didn't pick any other ones, but I just still appreciate that Dave Livermore sent us that list. It really right. helps to know what's going on. And it's just great to hear. And the music was amazing. And the group of uh, gentlemen that had the really low voices, I, I just commented, I've never heard any such. There was more than I think it's like four, but they make such a difference in that. It's like such a um, mellow tone in the music. It was I'd never heard it before in any any of the concerts. So I commented. I actually talked to a couple of the gentlemen. And they think it was nice. It was nice to be there. Go ahead. I just want to, uh, and this is the last time I'm going to say this, but I want to thank the Forest Lake FFA. For the poinsettias I got for Christmas. I know I said this a lot, but I cannot tell you how good those poinsettias were. Uh, and we will be working very hard at trying to keep them alive for the rest of the year. The other thing that I want to mention is something that's a little different, maybe in a positive happening, but it's something that's affected me for the last, ever since the last meeting. I want to take time to just recognize uh, John Paul Jacobson, JP. As our director of teaching and learning, uh, the team of educators from the middle school and the high school and the administration of those schools, the curriculum instruction committee, and all others involved in the new course development that we had at the last meeting. The recommendations, the implementation, and the many, many new courses within the middle school and the high school were driven by our strategic plan, which we've said before, and the excellence in career, college, and future pre preparedness. So I want to say job well done. Congratulations really nice. I mean, it, it means a lot to me personally because I think it's getting kids ready to really do something in the world. I came from a background where, you know, everybody said go to college and get a general degree, get a CLA. Now the kids will be much better prepared for the future. So thank you for that and everybody for this. And that ends my report. Well said. Well, nice. Thank you. 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 Very nice. I want to just quickly add on to that, Alex, and recognize JP. Um, I was at a small gathering, and the mayor of Lionel Lakes was there. And I had never met him before, but he came right next to me with my husband and wanted to talk about JP. <laughs> and he mentioned JP in our gateway courses and this presentation that he had listened to, and it was so impressive. The information, what Forest Lake is doing with their new gateway courses, which I him that word but he was like it was the most impressive presentation i have ever seen and he said that jp explained the courses and answered questions so it was really really kudos i sent jp an email and the superintendent just a proud proud moment for me um i kind of live in an area where when i door knocked people would say oh we go to centennial slam and i would try to like stop the door a bit and just say hey you know, listen to what we're doing in Forest Lake Area Schools. And so he was so impressed. And they want to start conversations with their high school principal and, and get some information. So congratulations, JP. And anyway, just want to mention quickly that I had never been to anything in our new gym. And my husband kept saying, have you been in that new gym? No, I haven't been in that big gym. So anyway, I went to the Forest Lake Rangers. I followed them on Instagram, the gymnastics. And oh my gosh. Mr. Caldwell was there. So impressive. If you ever want to get excited for the Olympics, I saw the uneven bars, the beam, and the floor exercises. It is beautiful in there, and they were so well trained. It was awesome. That concludes my stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And I have one more thing. I just wanted to thank um, a group of ex Forest Lake grads, broke the grads, were home for the holidays, and got to play in the gymnasium um, at the field house. And they loved it. It was there's over 20 guys there. And they they had they just loved it. They were so appreciative to be able to go and play. And they said, Oh, I wish we would have had it when we were going to school. So just to hear them have their excitement and just be able to cut the camaraderie of the graduates together, it's it meant a lot to them. So I wanted a special thank you for letting them be able to play in the gym. It's great.
It's incredible, that gym. Mm -hmm. It it's is. Beautiful. I loved it. Anyone else? Right. Hearing nothing, we'll move on to reports, workshops, and conferences. Well, we have MSBA coming up this week, and it's going to be in person instead of online, so I'm pretty excited. So we'll come to see everyone there. It's on the 13th of January next week. Anyone else? We'll move on. Buildings and grounds. Is that our quarter? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah. 960. Uh, a special board meeting was held on Thursday, December 9th. The purpose of the meeting was to make a revision to the current school year calendar to provide the staff with an additional day off at winter break. December 23 was changed from an in-person instructional day to a, a no school day. And February 4th was changed to a staff develop, from a staff development day to an in-person instructional day. Um, the January 2022 meeting normally would have occurred last night. It did not occur because the first meeting in January is always held in the second week in order to give all uh, member school districts the opportunity to pick the uh, representative from that district at 916. So they hold off for an additional week. Uh, and that ends my report on Northeast Metro. Thank you, Member Kettle, and I apologize for missing that on the agenda. No. Nope. We'll move on to buildings and grounds. Member Corcoran? Um, well, there, as always, there's so much going on with buildings and grounds. Um, we had a the status of the construction projects. Uh, Mr. Martini said that we're, we're closed out of all of our bonds and certificates participation proceeds and um, just all the projects going on. The big thing we talked about, of course, was the ice arena. That is going to be started um, this summer, a little bit of the refrigeration things. And then in summer of 2023 is when they're going to put hard sides on the bubble. Um, they're going to probably do it um, summer 23 and they're going to be probably shut down between six and eight weeks during that time to put the hard, hard sides in. But um, I know that's a long time coming and I know people are really excited for that to give it extra, mm -hmm. because especially with the cold right now, I can't imagine how cold that bubble would be right now. <laughs> so um, that's coming and just all the amazing things that they're doing, um, all the roofing and I mean, just the updates we get is so amazing and all the stuff that this, our custodians and building the grounds department does is impressive. And um, I just want to give them kudos for all their hard work and Keeping us so informed about all the projects. Can I add one thing? I'm sorry. Sure. Just, I want to add just one thing that I yeah. took in my notes, yeah. uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, it was mentioned that for the first time we had a Forest Lake student actually apply for a subposition yeah. uh, in maintenance. Andy? Yep. Is it Andy Katz? I think it was Andy. Andy, yeah. Andy Katz. Yeah. Which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're hurting them, getting the Right. Thank you, Member Tyson, or Member Keto, and Member Kramer. We'll move on to the City of Forest Lake with Member Tyson. Yeah, so the City of Forest Lake didn't have any meeting this week. They meet on the 9th. Um, the EDA is working on a master plan for the downtown uh, redevelopment that I've talked about, and an initial draft concept will be revealed and shared in January. <clears throat> so that's pretty exciting. Um, in their regular agenda, they talked about a new record uh, management agreement that is a big computerized system for the fire department. And then they also had the approval of the downtown stormwater study uh, given by city engineer Ryan Goodman. And that concludes my report. Member Tyson, we'll move on to the communications committee. Also, Member Tyson. Yes, Director McKinnon gave him a great overview of a customer service program that they developed starting in 2018 by meeting with um, the Minneapolis Park Board. And it's based and steeped in just um, having criteria for good customer service. And so that's how um, they consistently can train them on this program. So he also, he also talked about some of the book studies they've done, and I did find this book at the library and checked it out, Who's Your Gladys? And then another book study they're doing is Be Amazing or Go Home. So very impressive, and they might be sharing out that um, plan that they developed on good customer service and all that criteria to be doing training in other departments in our district. So that concludes my report. Dr. Tyson, we'll move to Community Education with Dr. Kettle. Uh, no meeting for community education was held in December. The next meeting will actually be on January 17th. But I do uh, want to mention on a sad note, uh, I think most of us know that, but maybe not everybody, 
Julie o Ullman's husband, Ross, died recently. Julie served as a Forest Lake Community Education Director for quite a while in the district and was also a teacher within the district. So that ends the report. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Member Kenneth. We'll move on to curriculum, instruction, and equity. Member Luther. We had a presentation from about cultural responsive leadership and teaching. It was a pretty good informative. Every time we hear this, I pick up another new thing. So I'm glad that we're going down this path. Thank you, Member Luther. We'll move to equity in our schools. Member Rachel. Yeah, this week our fifth grade students at Forest Lake Elementary began their eight part culturally responsive student leadership series. Paula Laughlin from Equity Alliance Minnesota is facilitating those discussions. During this first lesson, students are learning how each of their values build community within their classroom. Students will begin by exploring their own culture, values, communication style, and leadership style, and learning about how those things impact daily life, behavior, and decision making. After that, students will learn about bias, prejudice, and stereotypes, and how those decision making shortcuts can be unfair and hurtful. Paula presented to the Curriculum Instruction and Equity Committee last month, providing a synopsis of the series. By the end of the school year, each fifth grade student will have had the opportunity to participate in this program. Thank you. Thank you, Member Rayfield. We'll move on to the Finance Committee. Member Corbin. Um, in our meeting, we talked about we talked about the budget updates for fiscal year 22 and 23. Um, we talked about the November forecast and leg legislative preview. And um, so, and also our student enrollment, we're still up seven students. Um, we did drop a few down from the original amount, and now we're still at seven instead of budgeted loss of 100. So we're still doing really well. Um, 2023 budget is set and looking good for next year. Um, I know we might have to do some revisions to some of the revenue, which revenue might be up a little bit from what they budgeted. And Let's see. Um, and Jackie, Jackie from MMKR will be coming in January to start working on uh, looking at state aids and taxes already for for the end of the budgeting again. So, and that concludes our report. Thank you, Member Corker. We'll move yep. on to policy committee. Member Luther. Thank you. Uh, policy as normal. They were going over some. Uh, pretty standard policies that are on their yearly review. We do definitely discuss them all, um, and they're coming up in new business. And there's nothing super outstanding that I feel like you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Member Luther, staff welfare, Member Olson. Oh, it says Olson. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 Member uh, We discussed a paid time off plan that would allow up to three paid days off. Um, it's exclusive, but it's for COVID-related illnesses. Um, I also talked about federal vaccine and testing mandate, which would be weekly testing and masks. Uh, we also discussed the bus garage having an open house for jobs. And the city was going to reach out to retired folks and snowplow drivers. Thank you, Member Landstrom. Moving on to the Superintendent Report, Dr. Madison. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'll just pick up where Ms. Uh, Member Landstrom left off with our efforts to recruit bus drivers, we have, um, we're extremely excited, first of all, to be back in school after winter break. Um, the time off going into break was a real um, challenge for us with our transportation, but a lot of effort has us um, working with bringing additional bus drivers on board in the training. And as you can see here, we are currently canceling about six bus routes a day, primarily due to the fact that we've got five to six routes on any given day that do not have a permanent bus driver. Good news is that we've got a number of drivers in training currently. It's a, as you've heard before, a six to seven week training process. So these folks don't walk in one day and start driving the next day. Uh, they're well prepared and well trained when they do become drivers. Good news, again, is we're not canceling nearly the number of routes that we were going in the break. All of our schools have built very effective and thorough drop-off and pickup plans for the number of parents that are impacted by canceled routes. So we're in a good spot there. 
Um, additionally, we think that COVID testing is a really important factor as part of our mitigation efforts. When our potentially positive kids or staff members um, test positive, they will know that and as a result be, be able to stay home and um, get well at home versus being in school. Uh, we have uh, rapid tests for each of our staff and students and we've doubled our order there as well. And just by way of reminder, um, positive cases in, in, in any classroom at the elementary level, based on our elementary matrix, will have masks on students and, and staff members in that classroom for 10 days. Three or more positive cases in one classroom that we consider to be interconnected or um, contagious in that classroom will result in distance learning for that classroom for 10 days to mitigate further spread. And a 5% COVID-like illness rate school-wide will result in masking for the entire school for 10 days. If you will allow me, I'm going to shift from COVID and give ourselves a break there. And, you know, it, it, um, it's worth celebrating a lot of success behind COVID that often gets called in and and forgotten in the midst of everything COVID, it seems like. So it's just for a quick moment, I'll walk through a few highlights as we celebrate 2021, as we move into 2022. Uh, in the midst of COVID and pandemic and shifting learning models, our high school students exceeded the national average with ACT test scores, quite an accomplishment. Our students, as you saw here with the students here tonight with the SAD group, volunteered last year over 3,000 hours of community service in the midst of everything else our kids were wrestling with and dealing with. The community stepped forward with over $2 million of scholarships to the graduating class last year to move them into one-year, two-year, four-year colleges. And those kids are studying across the state and across the country, frankly, um, with those dollars in hand. A real tribute to this community. Also, throughout all of our schools, elementary, middle school, and high school, our music groups last year uh, performed um, virtually sometimes as well as in person for families and friends. <clears throat> Theater productions performed to live audiences, giving students an important form of creative expression. Athletically, you can see the incredible success. Oftentimes, kids were performing with masks on, if you recall last year. But even in the midst of that, and you, you heard that in the voice of the kids today, how important those activities, in, the, in addition to performing in the classroom, are vital to the whole experience for kids. We were able to not just keep those things going, but keep those activities available for kids at a very high level. And you can see the amount of success and accomplishments that our kids have across our athletic Additionally, prior to the pandemic, you'll recall we had a stadium facility task force that came to the board with a creative, visionary, and bold recommendation to upgrade our athletic facility at the high school. You can see there with the picture that at the height of the pandemic starting last spring, including almost in the final days of summer break, our athletic field um, was home to soccer and football this, this fall. And we'll be home to our first track meet in 25 years. All accomplished um, this past year. I want to quickly highlight um, where we're at financially. You know that we have received our report and accepted a clean audit, which is an amazing task for our accounting department. So huge credit to Larry Martini and his team Chrissy Renberg for all of the uh, financial management and th that resulted in a, in a clean audit. We will bring forward a small increase to fund balance, which means we're spending the dollars where we need to, but we're also creating a, a solid foundation financially as we move forward. And most residents in Forsyth will see a slight decrease to their school-based um, property tax moving into next year. All the amazing accomplishments that um, allow us to celebrate 2021. 
with that, I'll turn it back to you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Massey. And with that, I want to call. Oh, go ahead. I just I had one question on the slide uh, about COVID. With the new rec uh, recommendations that they go to five days versus ten, have we considered that at all? Has that been considered? Or? Yeah, we're we're definitely considering that. Currently, the CDC's guidance moving right. from a ten-day quarantine to a five-day quarantine is a, a media communication from CDC. It's not a firm recommendation okay. or policy. So MDH, Minnesota Department of Health, has not yet adopted that as their guidance, and therefore MDE has not adopted that either. Right. However, just today, MBE reported that schools could consider moving to a five-day quarantine uh, versus attending. So we'll get together as a team and figure out how best, but we believe that early next week, mid next week, MBH will have a firm policy guidance on quarantine. And I'm not recommending it. I don't want to come out that way because I think that, I mean, the longer the better, I mean, just for safety, but I just have a question. Yeah, the CDC updated that just in the last couple of days, their guidance from late last week and over the weekend to now include a testing out at the end of the five day piece. And then if a negative and asymptomatic and, and having no symptoms, uh, mask wearing for the final five days and out of quarantine. So we'll take that under advisement and consideration and determine best, how best to move forward. Thank you. Question? I just have a quick question for the superintendent. Did I read that the Depart the Federal Department of Transportation changed part of the testing procedure for bus drivers? They removed part of it to help facilitate it to be quicker? Yeah, they, they have been uh, very responsive to some of those pieces. Uh, Director Martini may know some of the specifics. But yeah, they've been... Um, That'll be helpful? Very helpful. Anything that... that one, make sure our drivers are well prepared for sure, mm -hmm. but to can shorten that training period will be very helpful. Right, and then the two million in scholarships is a good portion of that from CSF. Yeah, government. at least a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars of that is directly wow. uh, through the community scholarship foundation. Those are all local dollars. Wow, that's so impressive, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Any other questions, mm -hmm. comments? Hearing none, I would like to call a five minute recess at this time. Will we be in five minutes? We will call the January 6th school board meeting back to order. Thank you, everyone. Where's your cold Okay, we're going to take a while. With that, we will move on to eight approved next consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving tonight's consent agenda, signify by aye. 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 Motion passes, and with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Massey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity with the action that you just took. You um, approved our next director of business services, Chrissy Renberg. And first, um, I'd like to give much due credit to Director Martini for his years and years of service. You might be aware that he started when the district was in statutory operating debt. And now we have a very consistent and stable fund balance um, and expanded programming throughout the district, successful facility bond referendum, and a, a successful operating referendum in place, all under his direction and leadership. So one debt is delivered for his incredible service, Larry. Thank you. And with that, I would ask Chrissy Renberg, um, his replacement, and now board approved for starting July 1st, our next director of business services. Chrissy's currently our controller, and has been with us a number of years, so we're excited to have Chrissy on board. Thank you very much. I'm super excited to be here and excited for the next decade or two to be here twice a month with you guys. So, yay. Uh, we uh, just wanted to give you a little bit about my background. Uh, I did do my undergrad at St. Cloud State University in elementary education. I do hold a Minnesota teaching license. Uh, I then went to Roseville area schools for 17 years. And so I did a little bit in human resources, then spent the majority of time in teaching and learning, and then in finance. Uh, back in 2011, I went and got my MBA at St. Cloud State University because I just love the finance side of school so much that I just knew that that's where I wanted to be. 
And so two and a half years ago, as Dr. Matthew mentioned, I came to Forest Lake Area School. Leaving someplace that you had been for 16 years was really hard, um, thinking about what it was going to be like. But coming to Forest Lake made me feel just at home as I was in Roseville. And the staff here is so amazing. The district is amazing. The board is amazing. And I'm so excited to serve this community. I am a community member, and I have an elementary school student and a middle school student in the Forest Lake District. Very excited to be here and follow in the amazing footsteps of Larry Martini. And he has been a great mentor, and I know he will continue to be as we make this transition. Congratulations. Yeah, we're excited. Yeah. Excited to work with you. Thank you. <laughs> Now we will move on to uh, nine approval of routine action items. And just for everybody's information, we're going to handle these uh, nine one through nine ten, and then we'll approve, go for a motion to approve all of those once we've gone through them. So we will start with nine one, approve board representative to MSBA. Currently, it is Julie Corcoran, Alex Keto, and Kate Lucia. I'd like to switch to MSBA. Tyson. Possible. Anyone else? I'll say. Board I can move off it then. Okay. And I'll stay. And you'll stay? You're the NSBA rep, right? Yes. And member Kennel. Okay. So member Tyson, member Corcoran, and member Kennel. All right. Then we have the Minnesota High School Sports uh, League. And currently is member Corcoran, member Olson, and myself. I know member Luther has expressed interest. I am willing to come off of there. I'll say. I would say as well. It is. And it's member Landstrom, sorry. And Corcoran. Yep. Member Corcoran, mm -hmm. member Landstrom. Mm -hmm. And member Luther. Mm -hmm. I just because I read member Olson consents with the promise. I know. I apologize. <laughs> we have the Equity Alliance of Minnesota, currently member Rayfield. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested in staying on. Okay. All right. And then is that meeting back to in person? Rob? Yeah. Rob? Yep. Okay. We've, we've met twice in person. Okay, good to know. Yeah. All right, and we will move to C, currently member Raphael and member Luther. I'd like to stay. Okay. Luther would like to stay. Anybody else interested in that? It's a, it's a pretty good group to watch their presentations and stuff. If not, I'll stay on. Well, I wouldn't mind going on there. Okay, why don't you take that? Okay. They have, they have root, their presentations, they have really interesting speakers. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so that'll be member Luther and myself. City of Forest Lake is currently member Tyson. I'd like to see if another member would like to switch. I think since member Moore had left, I've done it, and then Alex did it one year. I mean, I enjoy it, but if anyone else wants to. Can I do the weekend there? It's Mondays. And a lot of it I can get to our wonderful council then Mr. Husnick or the mayor when I see her or I look it up online. Okay, I would mind switching it to Great, thank you. Okay. Perfect. All right, then we have the Special Ed Advisory Council, currently member Landstrom and member Tyson. I'd like to say. I'd like to say as well. Okay. And we'll move on to Community Ed Advisory Council. Currently, member Keto and member Luther. I'll stay. Keto would like to stay. Member Luther. I'll come off that one then, because it's also Mondays. Sure. I'd be interested in that. All right. It's a good one. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will go, member Keto. Mm -hmm. All right. And member Rayfield. All right. Then we're moving to the Agriculture Ed Advisory Board. Currently, member Luther and member Rayfield. I, I'd be willing to come off that. 
I would like to go on that. Yeah, they always have cookies after meetings. Well, but it's been virtual for a while, so. Yeah. Don't tell your cookies. <laughs> you don't know what to sell it. Take your own off. Member Lusner? I can say. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll be myself and Member Lusner. And we have the Emergency Services Health Careers Advisory Board. It's currently myself and Member Landstrom. I'd be willing to come off or say, say yeah. either one. Yeah. Well, I could go to that now, um, but if you'd like to stay on it. I would be happy to give you that decision. Would you? Yeah. Okay. Let's take it. <laughs> it's harder for me to get to, so we will member Landstrom here okay. standing. Yes. And member Tyson. All right, and then 916 school board is number Keto for the four year term. Right. So with that, I would entertain a motion to approve 9 1 to 9 10. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Motion passes. We'll move on to 9-11. Designate the official school newspaper. Dr. Ramsey? Yeah, we would recommend, uh, based on the good received from the Foresight Times, that we continue with that. Uh, their quote is um, identical to the rates that were quoted last year and that we've been paying this year. Or that administration recommends approval. We have a motion for 9 11. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I would just like to say I really appreciate the work that the Foresight Times have been doing. They've just really, really been fantastic in, in reporting on our schools and the community, and I really appreciate it. Couldn't agree more. And I concur with member when you feel I've been getting the Times as well again. And it's just an excellent paper to read now. There's so much more in there and just great articles and writings. So kudos and thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, would you please take a roll call? Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Kettle? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson Hoekside? Member Peterson? Aye. And Member Lutner? Aye. All aye. Motion passes. We'll move to 912. Set school board salaries. I'd like to make a motion that we take the base salary and increase by 2%. Motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Uh, yeah, I think that the 2% matches what we've been doing with our bargaining groups and I've always been a strong proponent of, of the school board salaries of them uh, keeping, keeping uh, moving forward. We had a problem years ago where we had fallen so far behind and then we had to make a big jump. We're still far behind most school districts and um, and I think we're all fine with that, but I think the 2% increase is, is a way of not getting into a situation where we have to make a big jump. You want that, I'm, I'm not sure the amendment accorded the director positions as well? So the, the, I, my motion put the 2% on the base. On the base, okay. The director or stipends, yeah, that's separate. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I just concur. It'll okay. pretty much exactly the same thing. Okay. okay. Uh, for the record, that equates out to ten dollars and seventeen cents a month. <laughs> so, for those who want to quit, do, do not calculate your hourly rate. <laughs> do not. So do not. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, would you take a roll call? Member Keto? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson Postine? Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luther? Aye. And Member Corcoran? Aye. All right. Motion passes. With that, we'll move on to 913. Um, just let me clarify. Our Based on that motion, will the director at 400 and the other the vice chair? Treasurer and clerk remain at 200? Correct. Yeah, okay. I think it's just on the monthly. Yeah, okay. it's on the monthly. Okay. So that was the intent of my motion. Mm -hmm. All right, with that, we will move to 913 school board committee assignments. I have these assignments here. Uh, the 6 p.m. committees, it will be building and grounds, member Keto and myself. 
Uh, curriculum, instruction, and equity would be member Landstrom and member Tyson. Staff welfare would be member Luthner, member Rayfield, and member Corcoran. And then for 7 p.m. committees, communications will be member Tyson and member Rayfield. Finance will be myself, member Corcoran, and member Luthner. And policy would be member Landstrom and member Keto. And I would entertain a motion to accept those as appointed. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Motion passes. We'll move on to action items. 10-1, uh, Horse Lake Area School staff retirement notices. We have a motion to accept 10-1. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I'd like to recognize uh, Susan Serwinski, a food service technology specialist for 15 years of service in the district. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had Patricia Howard, ECSE teacher, retiring after nine years of service. And Claire Ritchie, a special education paraprofessional with 21 years of service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks years of service. With that, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting 10-1 signify by aye. 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 Motion passes. We'll move to 10 2. Donations. Ever count? Uh, for this month, we had a total of $18,012.28 in total donations. Uh, we had a $8,225.53 donation from Scandia Elementary Enrichment Foundation, CEF, for literacy materials for the school. We had $2,856 donated by Michael Baudet for a caliper and grinder for the industrial tech programs. 20, almost $23,297.75 from the Red Lion Club for payment for girls hockey uh, coach bus trips for away games. $2,000 from the Forest Lake Lions Club for the marching band support, VA Lions. $833 for the Blue Lion Club for uh, boys hockey, uh, two coach bus trips. $500 from each of Johnson Turner Legal, Olson Sewer Service, and the Community Scholarship Foundation for uh, use with the Spring 2022 Hall of Fame induction. And last, again, but hardly least, $300 from Lynn and Red, Ren Brandenburg, providing funds for student resources as needed. Once again, for a total of $18,012.28. Be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 831 that the school board accept in appreciation the following contributions and permit their use as designated by those donors. So we have a motion. We have a second. 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 <laughs> motion and second. Any discussion? I really appreciate the reading on that, Member Kevin. Yeah, I like it. Uh, all those in favor of accepting tonight's donation, signify by aye. 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 Motion passes. We'll move to 10 3 out of state travel by school board members, policy 103. Dr. Madison. The purpose of this policy is to control out-of-state travel by school board members as required by law. This policy has been reviewed by the policy committee and it comes here with no recommended changes and we recommend approval. We have a motion on 10-3. So moved. Second. A motion and second. Discussion? This was when we discussed in policy. Uh, no changes, but ever hopeful we'll leave the state again. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it could have happened. <laughs> Thank you, Member Lister. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, please say roll call. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson, will sign Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luther? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. All ayes. With that, we'll move on to 10 4, Student School Board Representative Policy 117. We have a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. I'm sorry, I should have turned over to Dr. Well, you have a motion and a second, but. Right. Um, we've had a lot of conversation on ways to uh, engage students more with school board activity and get students in front of the board for presentation and, and engagement with the board. We've, the last number of months, had really dynamic presentations from student leadership groups at the high school. Along with that conversation, the board asked that um, the policy committee consider the development of a policy should the board decide to adopt a policy and move forward with a student liaison to the school board or school board member. So that policy has been discussed and developed by the policy committee. And there was 
presented as a first reading last month here tonight for discussion and a vote by the board. Right. So we have a motion and a second on the floor, so I would entertain any discussion right now. Carol Lansher? I'm happy this came together very quickly. I think it's very well written and it allows for some flexibility, but it's a great starting point. I'm thrilled to see this moving forward. Can I just, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you call my name? I did, yeah. Okay, because I can't read your lips. I'll try to speak up. I know, I know you're good. Um, I just still have a couple of uh, places in the policy that I have question marks. Um, one is 3.5 that I think when the chair picks the two school board members that there should be representation from the high school, whether it's a dean or an AP or the principal himself. I just think that that two member board, the two members selected by the chair needs to have input from the high school. Um, the other thing I wasn't, well, what became completely apparent to me in this policy is that it's a two student policy and nowhere in the policy does it reference doing the onboarding and the training for the two, the junior and the senior. So I think somewhere that should be included as well. And then I did read in here and I'm wondering, I'm not sure if the superintendent would know, but that there was a board vote to end it and I'm not seeing that language in there. I like so. Is the it end. still in there and I can't find I it? it was near the end. It's near the end. It's uh, five, no, three. five, three. Yeah. Five, three, but I mean, should it say a majority or should it say unanimous? Does it need that clarification? I'm not sure. Well, just, uh, Most majority. Of our votes are majority. Just majority. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that as well. Um, and I also want to thank the policy committee. I know Donna's not here, but I feel like we're we're in very challenging times right now. Twenty months of a pandemic, and we put this on them to do a brand new policy for us. That's a lot of work. They did an excellent job. Um, we have had quite a bit of robust discussion about it. I'm just going to quickly reiterate a couple of my points that I feel that the best involvement for our students is in our committee work. I worked side by side by, with high school students on those committees and I think it's an excellent learning experience. They can ask questions, they can bring their input, they can, they're well integrated with the group, they can ask questions of the Paul HR director herself. I mean, it's, it's a very, very positive outcome. And I also feel like, um, our student reports, I'm really liking that piece. I think that they bring the relevancy. Um, it's just like hearing it right from the horse's mouth versus a student report coming and that student trying to do academics, sports, and everything. We're hearing it right from the student groups. So I really, really, really like that and I want to see that continue. Um, I also think that the perception of trying to keep up with the Joneses or the school down the road or the district across, you know, we stand on our own merits and I want to do what's best for the students in our district. And I think that's important. And I just don't know if we're ready for this. I think it's kind of been pushed through kind of fast for me. So that concludes everything I have to say. I know we've talked about it a lot, but I do want to thank the committee and make sure that gets back to them because this is written really well. Mr. Chair, if I can add a point of clarification. Approval of this policy does not make the decision of the board to move forward with adding the student to the board. It just has a policy in place that would detail how that would proceed should the board decide to move in that direction now or in the future. Mm -hmm. so my only point is with everything going on, it's just it's a big change to our board. And I don't think the timing is quite right. It doesn't mean I don't agree with adding it down the road. I just don't know if I want to do it right now. Like, so if you say, if we approve that, doesn't mean we have to add a staff, I mean, a student board member this fall. We can decide as a board when we're ready to take on that role. That is correct. Okay, well, that's, that makes me a lot feel like yeah, So then can it go back to the committee with a couple of those questions I had to see if they think that would be valid? Well, I think it might be we, better. If it was going to go back to the committee, we would have to vote it down tonight and send it back to the committee. If 
it was, if we approve it tonight, it's approved as presented, unless you want to make changes right now on the floor, which we could do. Um, so, okay. well, I, I, I'm so sorry, we're remiss in forgetting this, but I wanted to look up last summer, I'm circling back to when we had our session with Gail Gilman, who did the strategic planning with school board self evaluation and goal alignment. So one of the things in there, because I remembered this, and I, I think that it's really important because in order to set this up for success, we need to be on board with the mentoring piece. That's gonna be really important for the two students. So anyway, in here under Q21, it says together with the superintendent, share the responsibility for the orientation of new board members and forming a new inclusive team. Implement a process for orientating newly elected board members, including mentor, and teams, reviewing written protocols, and then she lists the links to those items. So I think until we kind of can get our mentoring down, I don't know if we're ready to move forward and mentor students in the school board realm. Dr. Tyson, any other discussion? Dr. Luther? I just want to say I'm really pleased to see this happen. Uh, I've been a strong supporter of it. In general, I think that it's important that we have many voices at the table and especially the high school where where they can really participate more. I agree that the committees are a great place to go. And every time someone said, well, what about this? I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Can we have that too? Yes. So this isn't exclusionary. This is inclusionary. And I think that it's important to have somebody on a peer level at the high school be able to be available to the high school students because each one of us have had friends and neighbors in our social groups contact us and say, hey, I have a question or what's going on with this? And we refer them to the right place or listen or whatever, but they feel comfortable because they know us, even tangentially. I, I see you in church. Can I ask you a question? So I want that opportunity extended to the people who are between 15 and 18, because I don't think very many of them are comfortable coming to one of us just out of the blue, unless they happen to be one of our kids' friends. And as the majority of the board don't have school-age children, I think we need that voice. And as the mix on the board will continuously change about who has children, who doesn't have children, who's raised kids in the district who didn't, that there could be a constant of at least a voice from the student body population. And I agree with Member Tyson that the presentations are fabulous. I love the presentations, which is why I invite so many people so often come to the school board meetings, see the presentations, see what's happening at Linwood, see what's happening at Lido, see what's happening in Community Ed, because you don't know what you don't know. And that goes for the high school because they came, they presented, they left. And if somebody's sitting here, then they come, they sit, they hear everything. And it sticks with them. And every kid I've talked to says, wow, I'd, I'd love to do that. So I've gotten pretty good buy-in. And I mean, I'm talking to kids that are coming to these meetings. But I think that there are people that are very interested in seeing this side of the equation. So I'm pleased with how it's written. And we went through it and got it to the point where we were pretty clear on it. There is the mentorship aspect, which came from the report, Ms. Uh, Member Tyson, that I think mentorship is really important and we have to start somewhere and constantly saying, well, we're not gonna do this until we do that. I don't know, it's chicken and the egg, like it's cyclical. So starting with a student that could be mentored, kicks off the process, who knows, but I'm not sure if we're going to start a mentorship process with no new board members. So having this delay a couple of years because we don't have a process yet seems like undue uh, waiting, undue delay. So I definitely hear your concerns, but hopefully trust the emerging process that we can see what comes of this. And I'm glad that there's a policy, which is a good basis to move forward on. Thank you, Member Luther. I'm Kevin. I just wanted to say that I think we're really on the right path. 
and the fact that we now have students involved in our committees and back to Gail's comment, I think you know it's wonderful having them on the committees and I think they have value. And I think this policy is at least a great start. And I think we, I guess we need a clarification because if we need to do more work, as you said earlier, maybe we need a negative vote on this. But, but I think we're on the right path. And I think it opens the door down the road when the timing is right that we can add a student if we feel that that's appropriate. Yeah, I mean, I've said my disagreements before, but I'll just say them again, is that this is an elected body, and, uh, and it's a political body. And so it, we're elected because the public has felt that we have a sense of not only how to steer the school district, but how to negotiate a lot of the political issues that are happening in the district. And those are complex, and um, we see that with COVID. There's a lot of different opinions, and um, we have to uh, really be able to suss that out and think about that. And and so, for me, having a student on the board, I don't think, I just don't feel like it would have the. Um, I don't think it would give us anything additional to having the students report, which I really like because I think it's really important that we hear the student perspectives. But I think if we have one student, then I don't, yeah, I, so I don't know. I mean, I, I worry about the political nature of this body because it's a really important part of what we do. And, um, and so, so that's my concern. I'm not, and I want to say I got a lot of respect for the people who are in favor of this because I think it's uh, it's really done in good faith and I appreciate that. Another discussion? I, I would personally like to say that uh, I have voiced my concerns before. <clears throat> and as I looked over the policy, I, I really appreciate the work having been on policy committee before and all the effort that they put into this. I My intent is to vote no on this policy and the reason that I'll be voting no is as I look over the last two years and I see uh, 72 school board members, adults, resign from their position because of the way they've been treated by the public. And I see the way that I've been treated by many members of the public. And I would not want to subject a high schooler to many of the things that I've endured uh, as a board member around COVID, around masking, around uh, people's opinions on CRT and the school. I would not want to subject my child to it or anyone else's child to it. And for that reason, I will oppose it here. And should it pass here, I will oppose it when we uh, would vote to put a student school board member on the board. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, would you please take a roll call? Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? No. Member Tyson votes no. Member Peterson? No. Member Luthner? Yes. Member Corcoran? No. Member Kettle? Yes. Motion fails. We'll move on to 10-5, Harassment and Violence Policy 425, Dr. Massey. The purpose of this policy is to maintain a learning and working environment that is free from harassment and violence on the basis of race, color, creed, religion, national origin, sex, age, marital status, familial status, Status with regard to public assistance, sexual orientation, including gender identity or expression or disability. This policy requires annual review, and the policy committee has spent time on this policy and are recommending some updated language with respect to identification of protected class. Um, and um, also on page 10, item 6B, uh, indication of um, an additional language regarding notification um, of complaints and who is notified. And with that, administration recommends approval. We have a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, Member Clerk, would you please say roll call? Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luthner? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. And Member Landstrom? Aye. All right. 
Going to 10 6, Student Transportation Safety Policy 531. Dr. Massey. The purpose of this policy is to provide safe transportation for students and to educate students on safety issues and the responsibilities of school bus ridership. The noteworthy change recommended by the policy committee is um, related to um, section four, item three, where we're referencing the district tobacco policy 427 and referencing that and linking that to this policy. With that, administration recommends approval. Do we have a motion on 10-6? Mm -hmm. Second. A motion on a second. Any discussion? I'd just like to, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to say that uh, in the policy committee, we went through mm -hmm. quite a bit of this kind of rereading it and, and uh, uh, I just want to be clear that we've spent quite a bit of time on this. Member Rachel, Member Tyson. I just have a question for the superintendent. How do we share this out with uh, charter schools that we transport? Um, you know, they they are familiar with, with this information, and um, I don't know that I have the specifics okay. to give you tonight, but we'll certainly look into that. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, would you please take a roll call? Member Tyson, both sign. Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luther? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. And Member Raphael? Aye. All ayes. All right, we'll move to 10 7 for Secretary of High School in course proposal, Principles of Management, Director Jacobson. Thank you, uh, Director Peterson. Uh, Regina Massey, members of the board. First, I'd like to say thank you for the generous and kind words earlier tonight. Um, if you were to use an art analogy of the middle school and the pathway work that we're doing is becoming a clearer picture. The brush strokes have really been laid by community members, parents as part of our strategic planning process, a committee of more than 30 teachers and other educators across the middle school and, and high school. Stuart, students that we lured in with coffee and donuts to give <laughs> that that group a lot of input and feedback on the work. Uh, local community members who are owners of businesses and future hiring managers of some of our students have really fed the work that has been done so far. And, and, they, and of course, the teachers that have continued to carry that torch in terms of writing this course is the curriculum coordinators of the deaf and who, uh, facilitating those conversations and that work over and over again. So I'd like to say that we're getting there, but um, we're going to have more courses to bring to you in the spring and in the summer as to phase two of that work for the middle school. But with that said, we've got four uh, high school courses here for uh, proposal tonight. These are the second reading of these courses. Back in December, we did a first reading where we did a, a deeper description of the courses. Uh, Nine, I'm uh, sorry, 10.7 is a course around principles of management. This would be in our business uh, and, and administration pathway that we have at the high school. This is a course really centered around employee motivation, leadership, organizational structure, culture, decision-making dynamics, and this sort, of, this sort of thing. Uh, it's a course that uh, is in, taught in partnership with Pine Technical College. So students who enroll in this course and complete it um, would get would get a dual credit both through Pine Tech and through our high school and uh, administration would recommend that uh, you approve the passage of this course. We have a motion for 10-7. So moved. Okay. A motion and a second. Discussion. Okay. Member Luther. I enjoyed all my management courses and hopefully they learn a lot from them, including top-down leadership. So um, I, hopefully it's going to be a great recommendation for the course. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, please take a roll call. Member Peterson? Aye. Member Lizner? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson, both sign. All ayes. Motion passes. We'll move to 10-8. Uh, Forest Lake Area High School, new course proposal, medical dosages. Yes, uh, this is again another course that we, uh, we presented to the board in a first reading in December. Uh, this course sits within our health sciences pathway at the, at the high school. This would, uh, like the previous course, be a course that we would 
teach in conjunction or in partnership with uh, Pine Technical College. It's a course centering around teaching students about medical dosages, how do you determine that, how do you even do the calculations related to a dosage based on a person's needs, uh, the, the terminology and these sorts of things. And uh, we as administration would recommend approval of this course. We have a motion to approve 10 -8. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. Just, oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I just have a question about. Let's say that one of these courses just didn't get very many people signing up. What happens to them? That, that's a great question. What that what happened is we would just not run the course for that particular semester or that particular year. This sometimes at times happens. And, and a few courses that we have in our registration guide. Certainly we like to offer as many courses to students and based on the level of student interest, we, we offer a section if we can. Okay. I guess I should have asked it as, what if the other courses are so great that it doesn't leave enough for this one? Yeah. 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 Same answer. Yeah. Same answer. Go with member Keto, then member Tyson. Oh, I just wanted to put in a plug. My, my wife was a registered nurse on the Fairview system for 45 years, and I told her about these three particular courses we're voting on tonight. She thought this was outstanding based on her medical career. So this is great. Right. I just have a quick question, JP. So I want to use these are so on point with, you know, careers that are out there right now. How did, how did these integrate with our, like our CNA program? Or CMA, CNA? Yeah. Student, student yeah. Student yeah. So these are courses that that particular team of educators mm -hmm. in that in that pathway area, health sciences, determined that these um, don't currently exist. They fill a gap in what we currently have in that area. Perfect. Yep. And so if I'm a, if a student who is going to be a nurse would likely be of high interest in courses and being mm -hmm. able to take these as a senior or as a junior. Uh, would have long-lasting benefits to them. Currently, they would have to wait to take that until they get to college. Now they'd be able to take them with us. Excellent. And these courses supplement and strengthen those pathways aligned with CNA and EMS and EMR. Wow. That's fantastic. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any none? Member Tyson, please say roll call. Member Luther? Aye. Member mm -hmm. Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Raytheo? Aye. Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. Aye. And we'll move to 10-9, Fort Lake Area High School, new course proposal, medical terminology. Again, this is a student uh, course in our health sciences pathway. It's around uh, helping students in that area learn all the definitions, the pronunciations, the, the uh, correct uh, um, uh, terminology relates to terms often used in the medical field. If you've ever watched Grey's Anatomy and tried to determine <laughs> what part of the body that they're referring to, uh, you, this course might be for you. And so um, we reviewed this course. Again, this would be a course taught in partnership with my technical college. Uh, it would allow students to get both credit toward their high school graduation and, and a credit, uh, post-secondary credit as well. Administration would recommend approval of this course. We have a motion for 10-9. No approved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson? Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Kettle? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Raytheo? Aye. Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. And Member Lewisner? Aye. All aye. Motion passes. We'll go to 10-10. Fort Lake Area High School, a new course proposal, pharmacology. Uh, thank you again. This course would uh, be the third course that we'd be adding in our health sciences area. We're trying to really bolster that area. That's a, as Member Tyson mentioned earlier, that is a incredibly fast-growing uh, career field opportunity for people graduating from high school and college today and into the future. This pharmacology course would really be centered around uh, helping students learn how different uh, pharmaceuticals or, or drug classifications and how they relate to, relate to body systems, particular needs within a human and why they might uh, seek medication or uh, why we might prescribe medication to a person for a particular need. If you sometimes look at uh, an old medication in your in your uh, your bathroom and you're not sure what that is even for, maybe a student who has taken this course would tell you what that might be taken for. So uh, this uh, we reviewed this uh, course proposal and administration would recommend approval. We 
We have a motion on 10 9, or are we on 10 10? Second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Discussion? I would like to say that I love the fact that these courses line up with Pine Tech and the yes. financial savings that that provides for kids going to college is some often we don't talk about. We, we just think that you know everybody understands that, but I don't know that everybody does. So I wanted to make sure to mention that you know they get these college credits at no additional cost to the, to the student. So. Well, sir. And I guess what I love is that they can explore these classes and make sure it's really where they want to go when they graduate. That to me is put some light years ahead of when I graduated. I didn't Great know point. what I was doing. <laughs> so, yeah. And if I could, I might add to that a student that might think that they are not able or they could not, never possibly uh, flourish in a college level class would be able to they have a very low stakes, have a, a, a very low stakes opportunity to try that and then prove themselves wrong. Just give them the self copies they need. Yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson? Member Kiddo? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luther? Aye. And Member Corcoran? Aye. All oh, aye. <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you, Director Jacobson. Mm -hmm. With that, we will move on to 1011, approve the 2022 legislative platform. Dr. Massey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, later this month, the legislature will convene for the session, the, the mid-session in the biennium. The previous year, they set the two-year budget. This year, it's a biennium bill. What's unique is the $7.7 .7 billion surplus that the state is working with. Now, some of those are one-time dollars. Some of those are earmarked for, uh, for savings and reserve. But there's significant dollars the legislature will be working with, in addition to bodies, that we hold and expect uh, some level of a supplemental budget bill. If that is the case, our legislative items are viable within that supplemental budget bill. You, know, you all know our, our challenges with transportation once again. Our first item is related to the transportation deficit. We were in both the House and Senate bills last year and lost out in the final negotiations when they sent the, sent the education on the bus education bill. Again, those bills have to be rewritten and, and reauthorized and moved forward. We have a lot of traction at the legislature on our transportation bill. So we'll continue to lobby on that front. And then the next item is related to special education cross subsidy which is the dollars that, because of the unkept promise from the federal government to fully fund special education or fund that 40%, which was the obligation when IDEA was put in place, the state has picked up some of that cross subsidy and districts through general fund has had to pick up the difference. It is substantial. The state has made some gains and not really enough and will continue to push and lobby in that way. And in that direction. And then lastly, um, just continuing to address general fund per pupil funding deficits. The state has not kept up with inflation on per pupil funding. That gap is significant. You've seen the charts. And a couple of ways, in addition to percentage increases on the formula, and there were increases last biennium on the two-year funding cycle would be to index the per pupil funding to inflation so that the inflationary piece is automatically included by law and that's something that needs to be negotiated and allowing school boards to renew referendum that's currently in place. Our referendum is in the third year on an eight-year term so that is set to expire at some point here down the road in five years. Um, there's been a lot of conversation at the legislature to give boards the authority to automatically renew an approved referendum. So we would propose that we continue to discuss with and ask for approval at the legislature to give boards that authority. So I would certainly take any questions but the administration would recommend approval of the 2022 legislative platform. We have a motion for 10-11. So, second. 
motion and a second discussion. Mauricio? Yeah, one thing, um, I think we're kind of playing small ball with allowing school boards to renew existing referendum. I know that's critical, but um, school boards should be allowed to set referendum just like any municipalities and counties can do. Uh, the fact that we're precluded from doing that when our mission is one of the, is the most important mission of government in this state is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I would, uh, when we say address general education funding inequities, I, it, should, it should be address general education funding shortfalls. I think the word inequity comes from our work through C where, we've, where we were getting unfair shares of the pie through these referendum. Uh, but the truth of the matter is what this, what this number three is getting at is that the state's not funding us enough, right? right? It's not that they're funding somebody too much and us not enough, they're doing that too. But this is really about shortfalls. So I'd like to uh, make an amendment to um, uh, change that to shortfalls from inequities. Okay. Well, Member Rayfield has made an amendment. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, amendment and a second. We'll vote on the, is there any discussion on the amendment? All right, we'll take a roll call vote on the amendment. Member Tyson. Lister? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luther? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. And Member Kettle? Aye. All aye. All right. the, yeah. the amendment passes. We have more further discussion on the legislative platform as amended. Aye. 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 Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that that's a good word. I do too, because mm -hmm. of exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also allowing us to renew or is it, I mean, it just would save so much time and energy and money. If we could just do it, like we should be able to. So I totally agree with that. And I'm, I'm just so curious, and I never quite understand why MSBA doesn't make that part of their platform. Because I've brought it up with some of them, and they just are not there. And I think it just seems so obvious that we should be able to do that. Any further discussion? All right, uh, Member Clerk, would you please take a roll call on 1011, the 2022 legislative platform as amended? Member Rachel? Aye. Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. Member Lipner? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. All aye. Motion passes. We'll move to 1012, approve the 2022 custodian employment agreement. Dr. Mass. Mr. Chair, I'm excited to bring this. Uh, agreement back to you for approval with um, a ratified agreement in the second year of the contract where initially we set uh, salary improvements at zero in the second year, which is the 21-22 school year, the year we're in. With your approval, um, that would move to a 2% raise in the second year of this contract. Administration recommends approval. We have a motion for 10-12. No vote. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? Just a thank you to our party. Yeah, mm -hmm. so well I couldn't agree more. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, would you please say roll call? Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luther? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We'll move to 1013, approve the 2022 school age care employee agreement. Dr. Massey. Thank you. And in similar fashion, we have a ratified um, agreement for this a salary improvement of 2% in the second year uh, with the School Age Care Employment Group and administration of recommend approval. And a motion on 1013. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? For clarification, were they also at zero and not one year? That is correct. Yep. Okay. And I also clarified with the superintendent that the site coordinator is not in the. I have some other questions for him, but they're in the general benefit. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Member Tyson, would you please take a roll call? 
Member Peterson? Aye. Member Luther? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keto? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson Blue? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. We'll move to 1014. Resolution directing the superintendent and administration to make recommendations for reductions in positions, programs, and services, and reasons, therefore, for the 22 23 school year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an annual item that comes to the board this time of year. As we, as an administrative team, begin our staffing and budgeting budget preparation process. Um, every year, based on enrollment in a, a particular school or overall enrollment or enrollment in a particular class, shifting in staffing and shifting in um, uh, staff positions is determined by enrollment and um, registration for different courses. So this approval would give administration rec uh, the approval to proceed with that budget and staffing development process where ultimately on April 7th, at the conclusion of that work, we would bring staffing and budget recommendations to the board for the following year. Administration recommend approval. We have a motion on 10 14. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. Member Tyson? Member Luther? Aye. Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Keno? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson votes aye. Member Peterson? Aye. All right. Motion passes. We will move to new business. 11-1, the first reading, professional development and mentoring policy 402, Dr. Massey. Typically, we don't ask for your approval on a first reading, but I am asking for your approval tonight. This policy is obsolete based on developments in, um, and movements in professional development and mentoring. This policy, again, is obsolete, and administration would recommend approval of the discontinuance of this policy. We have a motion to discontinue policy 402. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. Member Tyson, would you please say roll call? Member Corcoran? Aye. Member Kettle? Aye. Member Landstrom? Aye. Member Rayfield? Aye. Member Tyson both sign. Member Peterson? Aye. And Member Luther? Aye. All aye. Motion passes. 11-2, first reading, transportation, employee, drug, and alcohol policy, 430, Dr. Massey. All school district transportation employees whose positions require a commercial driver's license will be required to undergo drug and alcohol testing in accordance with federal law and the applicable provisions of this policy. Administrator, or the policy committee has reviewed this policy and are recommending no changes at this time. Dr. Massey, we'll move to 11.3, first reading, bullying prohibition policy 541. The purpose of this policy is to assist the school districts in, in its goal of preventing and responding to acts of bullying, intimidation, violence, reprisal, retaliation, and other similar disruptive and detrimental behavior. The policy committee has reviewed this policy and are recommending no changes. Thank you again. And with that, we'll move to review your upcoming calendar dates, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by aye. Aye. aye.